What do you do, construction? Hoosker do's from the Hoosker don'ts. Who's your do's and who's your don'ts? They're stuck together right now. Oh no. Yeah. What does that make it? Who's your camp? Oh, I suppose. I mean really the transmission's fine. It's the it's the part of the transmission that gets you moving. A little That's true. thingy jigger and the hydraulic right clutch is not hydraulicizing. Correct. It's just, We're gonna have to put one in that hydraulicizes. It's just hanging oh. Overall practice not too bad. Quite good. Yeah, went third session was good. Okay. Drastic improvement, so glad we got the third session, but we do have to drop a tranny in today. You know, nothing we haven't done before. We'll be okay. See, Aaron, I turned the camera on just in time to climb under here and make it look like I've been doing everything. You've been working hard. <laughs> I got lucky and Race XR showed up for an interview with the driver right when we were about to start this project, so Aaron and Corey have about got it done. They Thanks. about got it done, but here I am to save the day on camera. That's close enough to empty. Onyx, hey. you lose the ball? Yeah, here, toss it over to your ball. Thanks. I got brake fluid on my YouTube camera. It's disgusting. Not as much as this red dirt it gets on everything, huh? Oh! We may need a mallet and a pry bar. Oh no. Nope. Just get on the tail shaft. I don't know. Oh, we got movement. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're gonna want to watch that. Can we put that other one in? It's not fun to spark against magnesium. Oh. There's the shed one. Next. Shaft. I'll grab the shaft. That's what she said. I think we can stop engaging in infantile jokes, guys. This one is, yeah, it says Meg right on it. Yeah, yeah, it's a pheromone later. We, we want to oh, stay away from that, that guy, Yeah, that right there. Yeah, huh, sparky. Against the Meg, could be a bad deal, so. Put tape over the battery poles, then? Badly funny. I mean, I don't think we need to take any safety precautions. <laughs> We'll just uh that's that your master switch yeah <laughs> so if if this tranny catches let's unload quick and unhook the trailer maybe yeah or we let it go up call it a week oh, my finger my fingers hurt there we're past the scary part spit on it <laughs> Need some lubrication. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh. Good job, guys. I'm sick of laying here looking at you. I'm gonna go up here. Proud of you. Car ramrod? Car ramrod. <laughs> I wrote it down on everything. <laughs> I haven't got mine in here. Well. For darn tootin' gosh heck sakes. That guy needs to go kind of clockwise just a little bit. Yeah, that. That's what I need. Ratchet? Yeah, the piece that turns the piece I needed. The clicky deal. One ratchet. One ratchet. Ratchet. It's like it's got a swivel end on it, but it doesn't. It's just that the extension is that wore out. That's a little wobbler swivel. A wobbler swivel. Just get them started. I'm just beyond finger tight. Which finger? Well, <laughs> however you get, I guess. Jeez, I haven't heard this song in a while. Is this Nickelback? It sounds like it. I went to Limp Biscuit Radio. Limp Biscuit Radio? That's even older school than Nickelback. Yeah. Tranny's tight. We also noticed we have a clearance issue on our U joints on the drive shaft. So we put in a new carbon fiber drive shaft before it comes down here. In the Wissota mods, we haven't been allowed to run carbon fiber until this year. So it's a brand new drive shaft, and it's got aluminum, aluminum, not the U-joint itself, but the housing around the U-joint's aluminum, so it's thicker. And it had made contact with the pinion on the rear end, which we had had issues with in the past, and it's never turned out well. So we're gonna put our other drive shaft in, which is not carbon fiber does not have aluminum around the U-joint, so one of those one of those maintenance, maintenance things I'm glad we caught before it ended up 
of spit in that drive shaft. We we changed plans here. Corey went ahead and did a little a little uh, fabricating on the drive shaft. So we're gonna run that carbon one. Custom. Custom. By uh, it's a CS fabricated shaft now. I let Onyx draw again. Oh good. Yeah. What do you think? Somewhere. Well, how many way. numbers were there? There is 100 numbers in there. I would guess 99. Oh, you're off by one. 100. 100. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We're starting the season out right where we left off. Woo. The good thing is it's passing points. Yeah. The bad thing is it's it's not like it's easy to pass here <laughs> at 200 miles an hour when everybody's just wide open. We got 10 laps. Ten laps. Ten heat, twenty features. There's nobody here from Hoosier either to get a thirty for the right rear. Corey's a little bit upset. I didn't. I didn't highlight his his fabrication enough. So I'm gonna there go down here. On. I'm gonna go down here and show you guys what a good job he did. I'm I'm actually quite Im quite impressed here. So what was happening is on D cell when this rear end rotates and wraps forward, we were getting the corners of the yoke here. They were just touching into the piece here that's fabricated into the carbon fiber that holds the U-joint. Well, Slap went around there. Slap is Corey, same guy. And he's just smoothing that out. Look at that. Are you sure you didn't do that with a CNC machine? I might have. But just to clear up any uh, miscommunications, I'm not for hire. <laughs> so do not call him and expect him to do it. It's a humble brag. That's, that's it's a humble brag, nothing something. more. Not an advertisement. Today, It'll be the same tomorrow. The order in which you guys come in might be a little different as far as car numbers. Onyx was thinking as long as we're down here, it'd be cool to check out some YouTubers. There are YouTubers that do race channels. Check these guys out. That sound, that makes me miss the late model days. We ran, for those who don't know, I ran a late model for 12 years. Mostly in Minnesota, but we ran a few outlaw shows. Nothing quite like what these guys have been doing. By the way, if you don't follow Hunt the Front and you like dirt track racing, those are the guys. Go follow them. I don't know what time it was. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> Wash it? Huh? Wash it? Yeah. Yeah. Over there and just spray it. Make sure the tranny works. The, their washing station wasn't super nice. shined up and looking nice other than the raindrops falling on it here right ahead of lineups
as we go green off of four guys, the leader gets a tremendous jump there on Asbury in the 6X car. Boy, Shad Batter not playing around here as we come back to the green flag. Uh, three down and seven to go here, Dwayne. There's Asbury on the top. Good run off of turn two. He comes with a big head of steam off in the three and four. Now he's going to make his eyes battle with batters. They come off four. Oh, and Asbury's going to let him know I'm right Ooh. there, brother. Ooh. Batter's going to give him a little, uh, give him a nod. Side by side for the lead. Down the back stretch, they roll. Look at Asbury showing out. Flexing like Big Papa Pump with the 23-inch pythons. Coming off four, brand new leader to Asbury. Now, it's really interesting, Mike. I was watching the line that time, and you're right. Asbury comes in the slick, kind of lets the car roll up to the top in the crumbs, and then right back on the throttle. Oh, he's right back on the throttle. That stuff is, even though it's crumbs, it's making traction with these little narrow tires right here, and he's using all of it as it's he is walking away from these guys. Yeah, just laying the keys on the front desk and checking out. 18.106. We're now under 18 seconds. 17.817. For Michael Asbury, that is an average lap speed. So we got a of, battle for second there up off of two. The 6X gets the 73 down the back straight away. Man, Zach Johnson not playing here in this one either, up to second no. spot. Average lap speed for Michael Asbury last time around, 107 and a half miles an hour. And that nice. lap was even better. That was a 17778. You, you can't I, top fast. I enough. can't keep up. So we got a battle up off of two there for looks like third place. The 73 is definitely slowing down there. After he's lost the lead, he's lost a lot of ground. The yeah, bull horns are on display. Two laps to go in this one as they cross. We got a battle for the third spot. We got a great run right here mid pack. That is Nick Stroop with the 45, Daniel Sanchez, the 463 year winner. However, going to be the 56 machine of Michael Asbury. Second spot going to go to the Millennial Farmer, Zach Johnson. Third is anybody's game. Is it going to be Stroop? Ooh. Yes, it will. Oh, look at, look at those famous guys on the big screen up there. Well, we ended up going ninth to second, so that's pretty much definitely should put us on the front row. So hopefully we still got some speed. I think the 56 is definitely better than us. I think the eight car is going to be tough to beat. We'll go see what we got. We were good enough. We don't want to make any changes. The car is still plenty free. And that's also my advantage in traffic, which hopefully I don't have to deal with in the future. But we will see. It was too good to change anything right now at this point.
at Bristol. Decent quality field. That was everything I had on them restarts. Just didn't quite have the horsepower. I think we got we got a couple guys with some big, big motors here, which we got to figure out how to compete with. Overall, I will take third in that field. Yes. For sure. Once we got the momentum rolling, cruise around on top. Relatively similar to our home track. Just keep that momentum going, keep that right rear up there, but we gotta find something. We gotta get up and going faster. Yeah, the guys in front of us have more horsepower. Seems that way.